Now, the Correctional Services Department says action will be taken against management of the Ilioko prison if investigations uncover they were negligent. This follows the death of a female warder last week, allegedly at the hands of an inmate. Eunice Moloko's body was discovered at the facility's COVID-19 isolation site. The Deputy Justice and Correctional Services Minister, Kosi Pategile Olomisa, joins us now uh, to give us more details. Please, good evening and thank you very much for your time tonight here on In Focus. Last week when we spoke to Correctional Services on this particular matter, the details were still sketchy as to, for example, more questions around uh, how did the uh, official end up in this uh, uh, COVID-19 isolation area without uh, any support, uh, the uh, responsibility as far as uh, security is concerned, the monitoring uh, of that particular space. I mean, there are lots of questions. Are we closer to any clarity right now? Well, definitely we are closer to some clarity because uh, we have been able to get a confession through the South African Police Services from the inmate who is responsible for the murder of Mrs. Moloko. What we are still to do now internally, what we are busy doing, in fact, is to establish exactly how it happened that uh, she was alone with this offender at the time, if indeed she was alone. And how it did it happen that uh, this particular offender was at that particular site at the time that uh, he committed the murder. So we definitely are going to find the ease to establish who the people responsible for the lapse of security are. Now, uh, the uh, pop crew has been calling, for example, for the suspension of the, the prison management uh, at the time for failing uh, in their duties. Is anyone... Uh, suspended at this particular point? At the moment, no one has been suspended. We don't uh, do things in a hasty manner because we might end up stumbling and uh, failing to follow the necessary processes, uh, failing to establish uh, exactly where the truth lies. So we have to follow the standard operating procedures that we have to ensure that uh, we are not going to be making mistakes in terms of uh, uh, establishing who did what and as, as a result, what consequence management measures have to follow. Right. Is, is there a, a information coming through from the confession as to what was the motive? Well, uh, that, the, that matter is now in the hands of the police and we are not in a position as DCS uh, to talk about what is uh, supposed to be in the location of the, the police as they continue with their investigations. Of course, as the department, we're interested to know exactly how it happened that uh, this particular inmate decided to do what, she, what he did. And uh, uh, what, what is the process then that will we'll now need to, to follow, uh, Deputy Minister, as far as the investigations are concerned? And um, when is that information going to be made available? We have a unit in the department that is responsible for investigating the matters of this nature, the security breach that occurred, that led to the murder of uh, this particular official of the department who served us so well for 23 years with an unblemished record. So we depend then on the outcome of the investigations by the departmental investigating unit. Is there reason to believe at this stage that there was compromise of the, the security at the center? Well, that is obvious because uh, we're of the view that uh, it's strange that this particular of offender was at the station where he was because on the face of it, he was not supposed to be there. And secondly, no official is supposed to be alone in the presence of an, of an offender or a group of offenders. So it's clear that uh, the breach of security occurred and someone is responsible for that. Even though we're not going to rush into taking drastic measures, we are definitely going to make sure that uh, consequences arise out of this and the responsible official is going to be dealt with harshly and decisively. Now, this, of course, sent shockwaves, uh, particularly around uh, uh, the nation as to the safety uh, of inmates in our correctional facilities. Is there a cause for concern? Definitely, there is cause for concern.
because as I say, our standard operating procedures require that uh, every official is not alone when in the presence of uh, inmates, especially inmates as dangerous as this particular one who has committed this dastardly act. And also, you know, it has to be established as to why this particular official was allowed to move out of where he was supposed to be, to be roaming around at that particular uh, part of our premises. Now, Deputy Minister, the African National Congress has sent out a statement of support uh, for the former uh, President Jacob Zuma, who is uh, in your custody at this particular point at the Department of Correctional uh, Services, following reports uh, of a, a surgical procedure that was uh, done during the week. Uh, are you able to update us on the state of health of the former President? Well, indeed, we can confirm that uh, former President Zuma is uh, in hospital. He's outside of our correctional center where he is incarcerated. And uh, indeed, uh, he was taken out because of uh, a decision by the medical doctors that uh, certain procedures need to be conducted to um, ensure that his health is uh, safeguarded. As I understand, there are still some other processes and maybe procedures that are still to be conducted in order to ensure that. Uh, as you say, he's returned to full health and you are uh, wishing him a speedy recovery from all those procedures. And in, 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 in that process, his welfare and his uh, safety and protection, how is that uh, uh, being handled? Well, in the normal manner, you know that uh, every uh, inmate who is taken out of our centers has to be guarded uh, in the same way that uh, they continue to be guarded when they are inside our centers. So definitely his well-being, his welfare is uh, looked into uh, to ensure that uh, all the rights that are due to him uh, are availed to him. And one of those is to ensure that he gets the best uh, medical attention that uh, he needs. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Deputy Justice and Correctional Services Minister.